Hello and welcome. In this video we will be demonstrating what's new in GPSX version 6.0. We have upgraded the model content, user interface, and numerical solver in this latest release. So let's start with the interface upgrades. The GPSX drawing board works pretty much the same way as before. You can come here to the process table and select the unit process icon from the list. One thing that is different now is that the library is chosen from this drop-down menu. Note here our new comprehensive library, which we'll return to at the end of this video. So I'm going to drop down a few objects and build a simple straightforward layout here. You'll notice that the objects themselves look a little different. They have a bit more of a 3D feel to them. The idea was to make them look a little bit more realistic and help to distinguish between different objects that looked very similar. So if I open up this uh, plug flow tank menu here, you'll notice the functionality of the menus is slightly different. If I change one of the parameter values away from its default, that change is now highlighted in blue, so it will be easy to keep track of the changes that you've made. If you ever want to check the default value, you can hold your mouse cursor over the number and the small tooltip window will highlight that for you. So once you've entered in all your information, you can click on Accept. And the process of building the model itself is pretty much the same as before. You go over to simulation mode. So here you'll notice the simulation environment is uh, a bit different. We now have these slidable bars to control the window placement and a series of tabs to help better manage your input and output. So you'll notice that you can come and make sliders in the same manner as before by opening up the uh, parameter menus and uh, dragging and dropping one of the parameters onto the input area. So now if you make a change to the value you can always reset it by pressing this reset button. You can rename any of these tabs by double clicking on the tab name and typing in the desired name and hitting enter. These tabs allow for better management of the information you're using to control the simulation. For example you can have all of your influent input on one tab and have your aeration information on another tab. One of the most popular features in GPSX6 is the quick display panel. By double clicking on any object you can create a quick summary of simulation results that is specific to that particular object. In this case the table summarized the information most important for an activated sludge plug flow reactor. By double clicking on any other object, for example this clarifier, you will get a clarifier specific table. In addition to the quick display panels, you can at any time create the graphs that you have always been able to make in GPSX. For example, we can make profiles of the dissolved oxygen and ammonia. You can use the auto arrange button to create the familiar bar graphs and then edit these graphs as required. We have added a new auto scale feature to the bar graphs and XY graphs that automatically rescales the Y axis as the simulation is proceeding. So if I come down here and run a 20 day dynamic simulation and adjust the influent loading while this simulation is running, uh, you can see GPSX rescaling the bar graphs as required. Note that all of the information in the quick display panels is being updated automatically as the simulation proceeds. The tables themselves are interactive. You can cut and uh, copy and paste information directly from the tables or you can export all of this information directly to an Excel spreadsheet. The Excel report will be a replication of the table itself including the image and all of the data. Another significant improvement in the interface of GPSX is the integration of the Influent Advisor tool. What used to be an Excel spreadsheet is now an integrated menu item in the software. Users can enter their user inputs in directly and the software shows the calculation of the state variables and the composite variables instantaneously. We have equipped the new Influent Advisor tool with two sets of default Influent stoichiometries. 
one for raw influent and one for primary effluent. You'll note that the influent fractionation forms change depending on which button you use. One handy interactive feature is that if you highlight any of the variables being calculated, the tool highlights the parameters being used and displays the equation that calculates that variable. These buttons allow you to export this information to an Excel spreadsheet directly or print it directly to a printer. And lastly, if you enter in information that uh, doesn't make any sense and violates mass balance, for example, uh, we highlight the problematic number and uh, allow you to debug that data. And lastly, the display variable menus act like digital graphs now. So if I open up this output variable menu and go to state variables, you'll notice that the simulation results are displayed directly on the menu now. Previously, you had to click on each menu item to get that information. And this feature is available for all variables on all output graphs. So that's the highlights of our new interface features. Let's move on to new models and model upgrades in GPSX version 6. We have added a few new unit process objects for specific tasks. There are three new chemical dosage objects available, acid dosage, alkali dosage, and a new nutrient dosage object available for pH and nutrient control in the Mantis II library. Each of these objects has been configured with several different chemicals for dosage. In addition, each of the objects contains a flow controller which has a PID loop that can be configured as needed. We have added a new activated sludge object. In addition to the conventional completely mixed aerated tank, we now have an anoxic completely mixed tank as well. It works essentially the same way and has the pump flow controller, however it is not aerated. We have added upflow and downflow denitrification filters for tertiary nitrate removal. These follow the same type of biofilm model that we've used in our other objects, where you can specify the specific surface area and porosity and fill of the media. Here's an example of the denitrification filter in action. So this is a system that is using an external methanol dosage to help with denitrification. And if we run a steady state simulation here and look at the uh, quick display panel, we can see that indeed uh, nitrate is being removed. This layout is available on the GPSX CD, by the way. We have also added a new influent model called COD states. The idea behind this model is to allow for influent characterization in terms of total COD. So you enter total COD, total TKN, and ammonia, and then the inert and readily biodegradable and so forth, uh, the fractions are of total COD in this case. And we have prepared the usual two sets of uh, default influent fractionations. We have updated the uh, MBR model, the membrane bioreactor model. Uh, we've changed a few of the input options to make it a little more straightforward to use. So we now explicitly ask you whether you want to calculate the backwash and transmembrane pressure and whether you want a variable or fixed volume tank. And once that's been put in place, we now have a water level controller uh, if you're using the variable volume tank. These objects now have another solid separation model called Empiric. The idea behind that is to have a very simple, straightforward model that allows you to do solid separation without having to go through the trouble of calibrating a settling parameter. The idea here is you can specify a simple removal efficiency and a flow rate, or if you like, you can specify the flow rate and the solids concentration separately. This will allow for easy, straightforward setup when you need it. We have also added a new model in the anaerobic digester object. As in the past, we support the basic model and ADM1, but we have now added our new Mantis AD model. The concept behind this is that it's a model of intermediate complexity, somewhere between the basic and ADM1 models. We have calibrated it using a number of our in-house projects, 
and find it to be a robust alternative to the complexity of ADM1. And lastly, this takes us to Mantis 2, our new comprehensive biological model. We upgraded our existing Mantis biological model, which already did carbon and nitrogen removal, by adding phosphorus removal, pH, and inorganic precipitation. We do full mass balance on COD, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and a full charge balance. The new model matrix is 48 state variables wide and 56 dynamic processes deep. The new model has 10 biomass types, including regular heterotrophic biomass, AOBs, NOBs, phosphate accumulating biomass, digester biomass, and a few specialty types such as Animox for doing side stream processes. These upgrades allow us to simulate new systems such as Animox side stream processes, two-stage denitrification, and the precipitation of struvite from digesters. The upgrade of the model required us to upgrade our solver as well. We have installed a new robust pH solver and upgraded our dynamic integrator to allow for fast simulations. We spent quite a lot of effort on optimizing the numerical engine to run as fast as possible. So for example, for a full five-stage BNR plant, with all the oxygen, pH, and inorganic precipitation modeling turned on, we can run a 10-day dynamic simulation in just 40 seconds. So to access this new model, you need to select the Comprehensive Model Library. And you'll note here a few of new objects uh, will pop up in your unit process table. The Mantis II Biological Model is available in most of the objects in GPSX. So if I go to our Sample Layouts menu here, you can access a five-stage BNR plant. And if we take a look at the state variable list by opening up the uh, output variables menu, we'll be able to see the unique state variables that are specific to this uh, new approach, this comprehensive biological model. So if I run a uh, steady state simulation here and click on the bioreactor profiles tab, uh, you can see this is uh, set up to do five stage BNR and we can see our two step uh, nitrification happening here. And uh, just to show off the speed a bit, let's uh, do a five-day dynamic simulation starting from steady state. And we have a dynamically changing input here and you can see that we can run five days in a fairly short period of time, just a matter of seconds. And if I click over here to the uh, quick display panel for the plug flow reactor, we can see the uh, pH modeling going on here as well. So that's a tour of the new Mantis II biological model. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products, such as CapDetWorks for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.